What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Chilling with Van Dillon. And this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist, Brian Norcross. Brian, I, I've talked to you in extensively for the last two years about all the hurricanes. But I want to know about you. What got you into meteorology to begin with? Well, it's a little bit of a funny thing. I was a news director in Louisville, Kentucky at WLKY, the ABC station then at CBS Now. And I had to hire a new meteorologist because my weather lady, who was terrific, decided to go off and pursue a career in country music. Eventually, I quit my news director job, went back to school, studied meteorology and communications at Florida State. Then Hurricane Andrew got me in the hurricane business. Yeah, that was, I was going to ask you about Hurricane Angie, but first, as, as a kid, where did you grow up? And do you remember any storms where you were? Yeah, sure. I grew up on the east central coast of Florida. My father was a NASA engineer. And uh, so I remember, and then before that, in South Jersey. So I remember Hurricane Donna mm -hmm. in South Jersey and uh, going to the Jersey Shore to see what happened to our little shore house, and it was fine. But it was quite stormy and flooded and nasty in, in, in Donna when it reached uh, New Jersey. So then you talked about it before. It was Hurricane Andrew. Now, I was a sophomore in, uh, in college for meteorology. And I remember watching mm -hmm. all the news reports. You were on national news talking about it as well. Take me through Hurricane Andrew because that was probably the, the change in your, in your career where all of a sudden, boom, all of a sudden Brian Norcross is a household name. I was working for the ABC station in Miami, and I had created a segment which they adopted and they ended up loving called Neighborhood Weather. And with Neighborhood Weather, I went out uh, into the community every day, Monday through Friday, and to tell a story. And I had to come up with a story, produce a story to tell. Sometimes it was because a celebrity came into town and I would go somewhere and interview them or uh, whatever, something like that. I'd take them to the top of a condo building and then get the condo buildings all around to say, oh, look, the star of Dynasty is here uh, with me. Come out on your balcony and wave. And people would come out and wave. Anyway, I'd have to come up with something to do. And I ended up going to the History Museum in uh, Miami, now called History Miami. And... Uh, and I would, uh, you know, look for stories to tell. And, and I, I would come up with stories that happened 65 years ago on this date. And I'd go to that location and show the old pictures and look how it's changed and so forth. Well, in doing that and studying the history of Miami and South Florida, I realized... Oh, my God, there used to be a lot of hurricanes here. Uh, you know, back then, before the Internet, you couldn't just look up how many hurricanes hit somewhere, you know, the frequency or something like that. So I came to study the old Miami and South Florida hurricanes, and I thought, boy, if I'm ever in charge of the weather, uh, you know, I'm going to have to learn a lot about hurricanes because this could start again. It hadn't happened in a long time. 1965 was the last big early hurricane hit with Hurricane Betsy. And so uh, when I became chief meteorologist at the NBC station in Miami, uh, I said, well, we really ought to be the hurricane station. They agreed, and we did a whole lot of work. I mean, a lot of work. More work than I think any station ever before or since did to be ready for a hurricane. So you prepared your station for two and a half years. What prepared you for your 1991 edition of The Golden Girls when you're on season seven, seven episode eight? The Golden Girls, Brian Norcross, you're even credited, weren't you? Hurricanes, and I'm playing the part of the weatherman on the show. They had a special night on NBC. It was going to be a two-hour night, so one hour of Golden Girls, two episodes, and then Empty Nest and Nurses were the two sitcoms that followed. And this article said they were going to have a hurricane hit Miami, and, uh, you know, it was going to be just a thing. It was just a little clip in the in the newspaper. Well, I thought, well, if a hurricane is going to hit Miami, I'm the NBC uh, meteorologist in Miami. I've got to be on the show. So I got in touch with the Golden Girls uh, production staff and the producers. Then they said, yeah, you can do it. And so I just uh, I, I ad-libbed it all, uh, what I was saying. <laughs> and they used a clip on one. They had already shot the show, and they kind of put me in so that, that you hear my voice coming over the TV mm -hmm. while the, you know, the, the girls are, are watching for what the, the news is about the storm. <laughs> That's so great. And the other one, they, they ran the credits over my face uh, talking about uh, the, the, the forecast and so forth. And I'm just making all that up as I go. There was no script, you know, nothing. I just talked and talked and talked about 
<laughs> about uh, hurricanes. Who was your favorite Golden Girl? Now that we talk about it, I don't know. You know the. Uh, I mean. Rue McClanahan and Betty White, they were wonderful. The whole thing was, was just beyond a thrill. The, so fun. Going into that little studio, which had been Desilu Productions, where mm -hmm. they filmed I Love Lucy. Wow. Uh, and, uh, you know, parking in that same area. And it was so uh, Hollywood. I've done some Hollywood things in my time, but that was, that the, was, surreal, that was right? the most amazing Hollywood moment. Yeah. I love it. And, Brian, you're a surfer like I am. So my last question is, you're paddling out, and someone's filming you, and you're going down the face of a wave. What's the song you pick when you're surfing down the face of a wave? What do you want in the background? I was in, in the Beach Boys Surfing USA mm -hmm. um, era, and uh, ride a wave, and go, well, no, that was sidewalk surfing, that's right. But they, they're sidewalk surfing, you know, I was a, a skateboarder as well, and so mm -hmm. that we called that sidewalk surfing right. back then. And so this, the song, Sidewalk Surfing, was actually the same tune uh, as a song about surfing. So, I mean, every Beach Boys song about surfing was, like, blaring on, on my... <laughs> Uh, radio in my little Rambler convertible when I had mm -hmm. my surfboard jammed in the uh, in the back, um, going to Melbourne Beach, which is where wow, yeah, um, where we surfed, and yeah, it was a it was a place. Yeah, I love it. it. I'm, I'm thinking it, it would go by the size of the wave. Anything head height and below for me would be Link Ray, like uh, you know Jack the Ripper. But anything above <laughs> head, head height is yeah. going to be something Metallica, like for whom the bell tolls. Right? Those things are when they get a little bit. Big, well, I only did oof. above head height one time. Uh, one time in my life, I did above head height, and that mm -hmm. was with Hurricane Betsy offshore, <laughs> and that almost uh, killed me. I mean, I was a small wave surfer, but I loved small, surfing small waves. We had these big boards. My board was 9'4". Oh, man, the Giant gun. boards, untethered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, but riding, you know, once you got them going, it was hard to get going, but once you got them going, boy, they were a lot of fun because so it was, fun. Uh, you know, you had a, a large area to maneuver, mm -hmm. right? And you could really walk on them. So it was it was a whole different sport than than the sport evolved to with the shorter, lighter yeah, boards. Yeah, with the whipping around. Now, I'm still a longboard guy, a mellow. I'm right. trying to hang 10, at least 5. You know, which is fun. So do you still surf? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking this summer, we, we, at least one time we got to go out. Yeah, no, I, I um, no, that's, that's uh, in my past. The last time I went to try and surf, I'm paddling out, paddling out, paddling out. And I was so out of shape in my shoulders that I could hardly lift. I, I mean, in fact, I couldn't lift my, oh. my body up when it came time to get up on the board. And I ended up kind of crawling up to, to, uh, to try and get up. I mean, it's uh, you got to keep doing it. You know, I ended up being a skier, Did you, uh, yeah. and because uh, I moved to Colorado at mm -hmm. some point, and that sort of took over my surfing skills. Yeah, man. Listen, it takes practice, and it takes all different muscles that you're not used to using. Brian Norcrest, man, I love it. And exactly. you got into meteorology yeah. about the same reason why I did. You love that water. You love seeing it come in. Good stuff, Brian. I appreciate your time, buddy.